All right. So absent a chair, um, the meeting of Essex Junction Development Review Board will come to order. This meeting is a hybrid meeting, which means that some or all of the public body is meeting remotely, and some are meeting physically at 6 Lincoln Street, where the public may attend to observe, listen, and participate contemporaneously. One member of this public body or other staff is present at 6 Lincoln Street to ensure the public can participate if desired. Please note that while we will strive to provide means for those attending remotely to participate in the public comment period, there may be technical difficulties or reasons that otherwise prevent or interrupt remote public participation. Therefore, it is important to note that the open meeting law only ensures the public's right to participate and comment at a public meeting by attending at the designated physical location as posted in the notice and agenda. If a member of the public or of the public body has technical difficulties accessing this meeting remotely, please alert us by using the chat feature on Zoom or by emailing me M-G-I-G-U-E-R-E -E at EssexJunction.org. And in the event of a technical difficulty that cannot be resolved, we may continue the meeting if necessary on Tuesday, October 15th at 6.30 p.m. at the Essex Police Department, 145 Maple Street, Essex Junction. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. As required by the open meeting law, let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance of board members participating in the meeting and have those members attending remotely identify themselves to ensure that they can hear and be heard throughout the meeting. This is John Alden. I think I'm still chair, even though I'm remote. And uh, that it was supposed to be on our agenda tonight, but we're tabling it until the full uh, DRB um, cohort is present, hopefully at our next meeting. Um, I'm Kristen Gilday, member of the DRB here. Maggie Massey, member of the DRB, also here. <laughs> Luke, you're uh, muted if you want to speak up there. I don't think he can talk. Oh. <laughs> That's Oh, well, you'll have to get them to thumbs up or thumbs down when it comes time for Thank voting. You. Thank you. Uh, good. Hopefully he's on his way to the meeting or something. Um, all right. Uh, any additions or amendments to the agenda, Michael? Nope, not to add. Just uh, just delaying the um, uh, election of chair and vice chair? Yes, um, we can do that. So uh, public to be heard, uh, is there anyone in the audience or online that uh, would like to comment on something that is not on our agenda tonight? Nobody. Um, great. So we're on to number three um, minutes for approval of June 20th, 2024. Uh, board members, are you ready to vote? Or at least I need a motion to... Uh, uh, put the minutes out there in approval. I motion to approve the minutes from June 20th, 2024. Seconded. Okay. All right. Uh, any discussion or corrections or changes? I thought they were good. All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that carries uh, unanimously. Thank you. Um, so we're deferring number four. We're on to our public hearing. This is a major site plan amendment for stormwater improvements for Essex High School at two educational drive in the R1 district by Howard Killian Green Print Partners, agents for Essex Westford School District. Um, I see we have a number of people here. I'm going to... Uh, Michael, I don't have my text in front of me for uh, having them swear the oath. Well, you're going to have to read that if you can, please. Um, I Let's see. I do not have the oath, um, and I am not on city Wi-Fi. Um, All right. I, I can pull it off, I think. Um, so anybody giving testimony tonight on, on the uh, public hearing? 
uh, for the item in front of us, please uh, raise your hand and say I do after I get finished. Um, I swear to tell uh, the truth and the matters uh, upon which I am providing testimony under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do, I do. Thank you. And uh, when you start talking, please introduce yourselves for uh, the record. It's being recorded, as you know, and it helps us uh, get the minutes straightened out. And how are we going to lead off? Gary, are you going to give us a, a little overview or are you going to hand it right off? I'm going to defer right to Howard on this one very quickly. All right, good. Howard, you're on. Great. Thank you very much. Um, real quick, Michael, are uh, Tyler and Gary in the audience, just so I could be aware? Yes, we have both present in the room. Okay, great. Um, so I'll go ahead and give a, a quick overview. Uh, my name is Howard Killian. I'm a construction manager with Green Print Partners. Um, address is 17 North State Street, Chicago, Illinois, um, Suite 14 60602. So a little background is um, Green Print Partners um, has been selected or was selected by the state of Vermont to manage a uh, basically their green schools initiative um, to help these schools um, meet the uh, three acre rule stormwater requirements. So we're pretty much the uh, the program manager of this for right now, 65 schools in the state. Um, we have contracted with local engineers to design the stormwater projects and assist with some of the permitting. Um, and then once, uh, just as a background, once we get moving forward, we will be open bidding these projects after we have all the permits. Um, and then we do hire local engineers to oversee all the construction. Um, but we are the agent for the state to um, basically administer this program. So what we have tonight is um, in front of you is the um, green infrastructure improvements for Essex High School at Two Educational Drive. Um, there's a variety of um, different stormwater improvements that we'll be doing. Um, all dealing with water quality and runoff. Um, I believe in your plans there. Um, they include items such as uh, redoing some basins, putting in some bioswales, adding what we call jellyfish um, filt uh, filtration structures. That basically have filters that filter out the water before it leaves the site. So there's a variety of different spots around um, the school property where we are installing these to collect the runoff from the different sections of the school property. Um, no new structures are being built. This is all at grade or below grade um, improvements, um, again, meeting the stormwater. Um, Tyler or Mike, um, or I'm sorry, Gary, do you want to add anything? Uh, my name is Tyler Barney. I'm with Otter Creek Engineering. We're the uh, engineer contracted by Greenprint and the state to uh, administer and get Essex High School into compliance with the state 9050 permit. Uh, but what Howard said was was all correct. And so you're the local. Yeah, so, so yeah. We're, we're the local. Um, we are under contract to get the stormwater for the, the general state stormwater permitting. Um, Howard is overseeing the lo this local permitting and we are offering technical advice and adjustments of plans and stuff as needed. So who's giving us an overview of the, the whole drawing set? And and then we had some questions. There were some questions submitted by uh, the Tree Advisory Committee. And uh, I'd like to have staff just kind of, uh, you know, help us where they can. You know, none of us are stormwater engineers, so we're going to need a lot of help walking through the fine points. Uh, you know, hopefully um, uh, the comments are constructive and we're sure you know what you're, what you're doing, but um, we are are charged with uh, overseeing the, the process here on our end. So uh, take it away. Sure. Um, and uh, Michael, they have the set of plans there available to them because it might be better just go through a sheet by sheet of the improvements on there. We could do that quickly. Yep. Um, all board members were given physical and digital copies of the plans to go through. Okay, great. Michael, so are you, do you is... guys have a screen there that you can put them up on uh, that we can watch? Because, I mean, I have them on my screen, but I'm kind of split screening, so they're not big enough to help me out that much. Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, join the meeting remotely and pull the plans up on my computer. Awesome. 
So, so I'll just give a, a quick overview of the plans um, before he gets them posted. Um, the, the first uh, five or six pages are all existing condition drawings. So it shows what uh, grading is out there, what trees, what existing um, utilities are on each site. Um, when we get to sheet um, C8, which is the first sheet of the improvements, um, what we're doing, um, it, Tyler, you can jump in and let me know which corner of the building that this is. Um, but we're, we have an existing detention basin, which we'll be doing a little bit of uh, improving some grading. Again, that's sheet C8. And uh, so we'll be improving the grading of that basin and then also putting in a jellyfish system again to um, filter out the runoff before it leaves the site on that location. And these and, jellyfish uh, underground, by the way? Uh, yeah, so there's a larger concrete structure, um, yeah. and there's a, like a rack in there to put all the, a lot of them are just round um, filters, almost like a giant pool filter, that there'll be racks of filters oh. in those that will need to be maintained. Um, these aren't the upside down. Right, I, I, I can cut in here too, to, okay. to explain this. Um, th so there are a number of these systems on site, and I'll just explain it for this one. Um, and then we actually, this same practice is used three times on this site, essentially. Um, so the school, like Howard said, has to meet that water quality treatment uh, standard, but also because it's in an impaired watershed is required to meet the channel protection standard as well. So what that means is water for the one year storm must be detained and slowly released on site. Um, so the jellyfish practice helps meet that water quality standard. Water flows through there and comes out treated on the other side. So that's removing phosphorus and things like that. Um, the purpose of the basin is water will flow into that basin, fill up that basin, um, and then drain out over the course of 24 hours. So currently, this is the one- well, the basins are for detention? Correct. And so and this is the one that behind that- will slowly release the water to the jellyfish? Yes. And so this is the one behind the track. And from my site visits, there has always been water in that area. Um, with these improvements, there won't always be water. The intention is for all these practices is to have water fill up in the larger storms and then slowly drain out. And so that practice should actually um, be drained out. Um, and same with majority of these practices should be completely drained out and dry in at max, I'd say 48 hours after a larger storm. So um, it's keeping more water on site for a bit and then letting it out. As, as it currently stands, water is always at that level. If it rains, it's gonna immediately overflow because it's already full. So by draining it out, it has that ability to uh, retain water. And then as it drains out, it still keeps that ability. Um, so so um, I don't know if you know the history uh, out in front uh, of where Essex Rescue is there and that um, green part of the lawn um, on the eastern entrance. There was a massive uh, underground set of structures put in there that I don't know if they're called jellyfish. They, they looked like, you know, half uh pipes upside down uh is that the same kind of thing is that do you know that that happened and there's already some detention and maybe it wasn't part of the of the essex high school detention plan uh yeah so there already there are existing practices on site already the the purpose of this um permitting is this essex high school was designated by the state as a three acre site so that's a site with more than three acres of impervious um, that has more than three acres of impervious and untreated impervious in that. So, so while the school does have some existing permitting practices, it is not enough to meet the current standard. So all of these practices are used in congruence with those existing practices to help the site meet the standard. Um, and then to answer your question, um, similar, um, but a little different. Some of the practices on site are infiltration based practices where water fills up and then filters into the ground. Um, in most of the areas where we checked out on site, there was high groundwater levels. So the groundwater was pretty close to below the surface, which precludes the use of infiltration because if there's water all the way up to the surface, water's not really gonna get down through. So most of these practices are flow through practice. So these jellyfish filters, water flows through, it doesn't go straight into the ground, it discharges off site, but at a lower rate and cleaner water. Thank you. So where does it go if it's 
Like, where, so essentially this one in behind the track. Yeah. Like it's going to filter out. Is it going to go over by um, towards the cemetery like that? So, so this one, it goes out right where all of these practices, um, not, nothing is changing in the drainage okay. area. So they're all draining to where they were okay. essentially. Um, so in a more efficient in, way. In, a, in a more efficient okay. way. So slower and treated water. Okay. I'm going to take a brief moment to request um, from Tom Nathan TV staff um, that I get access to share content for the meeting, if that's requestable. So just a side question while they're getting sorted out there. Um, the track, uh, which also happens to contain the varsity football and soccer fields, uh, from time to time, does that improve the uh, dryness and drying out of the of the fields inside the track? Um, it may. That is not the specific intention of the project uh, to improve the drainage on site. It very well may, if things are getting uh, there better and draining out better, that pond may be able to hold more water. But that was not the intention of the permit. Uh, but it certainly will not make anything worse. And okay. do you have to make that bigger, the pond? Big? I mean, just because I know that that passage, that area where people walk around that is mm -hmm. very, it's not, it's not very big. Right. Yeah. Um, so is that going to affect? Um, so if you can see on the plans, the dotted lines are the existing, and then okay. the, the solid line is the the proposed contour. The The real purpose behind this contour um, is to make it slightly bigger. Okay. Um, all the slopes are saying three to one. So it's okay. it's actually almost shallowing out it a little bit okay. um and there it won't affect the walking around um yeah at all I, I imagine actually that the the contours you see are are pretty close to where the water is is currently and so the, as the water drains out during non-storm events there's the actually more grass that is all okay. perfectly walkable all of these basins are designed to just be grass and mowed just as in normal lawns um okay. there's no specific vegetation on on just the basin aspect And there, um, I'm just looking at, for example, well, let's see, that's sheeting. Okay. Well, it's uh, the page numbers are a little different than the sheet numbers. So right. I'm trying to go back and forth from the overall plan. So I know where everything is to the little plans to see what's really happening there. And um, I can't wait till you get to share your screen, Michael. We can all look at the same thing. Can I just ask a question? Just to, it's more of a, um, oh, so I'm looking at this now and I'm realizing the the road, when you go Colchester Road, when you kind of go into the side event parking, right, right there, the other way to the track, yeah. the property to the right with the rocks, that's not, yeah. that's not Essex High School. So everything here on this side, on this side of Colchester, this isn't the high school that, property? Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, it is. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, on the left side, across, the, left the, street, side. On, across, across the, street. the street. Oh, okay, that's also high school. Yeah, and high school. is that part of, that doesn't seem like it's part of the- It may not be a part of this specific okay. project. So okay. the standard we have to meet is to, for the water quality is to treat essentially 50% of the okay. uh, of the runoff that comes off, 50% of that volume. Um, and so the intention is not to pick up every single ounce of water that comes okay. off the site, just because there are areas that like part of the parking lots just yeah. go straight into the the creek there and yeah there's nothing really we can do about that i just my my question my reason for that mm -hmm. is that i i walk that and pretty much every day and i i notice that that road is being eroded yeah. but i wonder if some of this stuff you're going to do will make that better or that's no it, it, <laughs> so you're like no, no. again not <laughs> necessarily the intention like, of the okay, project yeah. it, the, the intention of the project is not necessarily to improve drainage on okay. site but yeah. to get the site into compliance, oh, okay. there may be, there will be some areas that should be that drier like as they drain out, but it's, getting worse. But it's not, okay. not the intention of the okay. project. Well, thank you. So since we're talking about that um, area by the back of the track there, let's, um, let's go to the specific sheet that shows the improvements and then maybe you can just show us um, how that relates to what we're seeing on the, aerial site plan 
So there's the back of the track. So now you've got a little and yeah, do um, you want the demolition or the improvements slide? Um uh, you might want to just for this one uh, walk us through the demolition and then the improvements. There there were some concerns uh, mentioned by the uh, tree advisory committee having to do with tree removals as um you know you would expect. Uh, so um, I think I saw a note re, uh, basically um, responding to that concern saying that most of the trees are coming out of densely wooded areas and not kind of uh, existing, uh, you know, hedges or uh, tree breaks. But um, uh, let, j just if you happen to be showing a sheet that shows a tree removal um, or some other screening device that's changing or a fence that's changing, just uh, point it out. Will do. Um, I don't think the intention is in this on this one particularly. Um, and and just for future the the proposed and demolition site. So the proposed one will just be overlaid essentially onto the demolition. Right. There won't be too much difference between the existing and the proposed in in that regard. So everything you can see on the proposed one, you can also most likely see on the existing. Minus a few, if there's existing structures or something, we'll we'll remove that. It'll be marked as to be removed. Um, yeah. For the trees, I don't believe anything on this sheet. Uh, there's any specific trees to be removed. I think it should all be within that spillway that currently exists. And the trees that are to be removed, I think, are on a, a later sheet. I think like yep. the 11 or 12 or something like that. I saw, yeah, I saw um, majority of them are here on uh, sheet C3. And then two more on sheet C7, which is just north of Essex Rescue. All right. Then we go back to the... Uh back of the track area. So just for my clarification, because in my world, uh, dashed lines mean one thing and in your world, they mean something a little different. Um, so the dashed lines that are representing contours are existing contours not scheduled to happen. Nothing's happening to those. Uh, and, or, uh, or we don't know yet because you haven't shown us the new work, which will show them solid if they're changing. Correct. The da on the existing plans, the dashed lines, and on the proposed, the dashed lines are existing contours. Um, yeah. And so the dashed line, which looks like a straight uh, pair of, of lines, is that a underground? Are you dashing those to show it's underground or dashing to show that you're removing? Dashing to show that it's existed. Okay. So anything dashed and anything on this sheet is existing, um, not necessarily to be removed. Any. Things that are to be removed will, will be marked um, as you, there's a stone spillway that is on there that is marked as you can see it in parentheses, it's marked TBR. So, so those are things marked to be removed. Um, other items, uh, that is the only thing on this on this site that is marked as to be removed. Great, thank you. Anyone have any more questions on the basics and, and this sheet in particular? What's TYP? It'll Typical. Um, <laughs> so there you go. All right, then. As in there, every time they see that that happens, whatever their note says is supposed to happen, or it's, yeah, it's like having the key that's for contractor specifically. Yeah. All right. Awesome. For all of this work, is there, um, like, how will it affect high school business? <laughs> like, will it take place? during the school year or in the summer or am I getting ahead of myself a little bit yeah so we'll it will have to go out to bid and oh, contract okay. and we'll but figure out that is but we have, once it's all set it's a five-year window that takes out okay so 2029 20, to 2030 the idea would be to not in not interrupt school is yeah and all yeah. this is yeah. fairly far away from the yeah. buildings the, yeah. the next one I think if we're doing is the closest to the rank yeah. could have, but if it, we would look to do it during the summer okay yeah in your opinion, if you told the contractor to get going, would it take them three or four months to do this, or they're going to need a couple of years to sequence everything? Um, I would just uh, say we direct all contracting questions to at Howard. Um, he's yeah, I would say that uh, we'd be looking at a uh, three to four month schedule. And when we get closer, we work out with the school, um, the check time frames, both of uh, when students are in session, out of session, any special events going on, graduations, football games, we try to coordinate um, everything to be so it's the least impact to the school and its users. 
Great. Um, okay, do we want to look at uh, the proposed improvements for this area so we can keep our train of thought or are we ready to go somewhere else? That area would be on against C-8. Okay. So new structures, new, the outflow is gone, so it's being piped somewhere now? Is that what I'm seeing? So it will look uh, pretty similar to what it would look like now. Um, as you can see, the the contour lines are the are the solid lines. That will be the proposed contours. Um, the other infrastructure that will be on site, there's currently that spillway that's kind of just in disrepair and just looks more like a pile of rocks. Um, it would be um, essentially burned up, neatened up. There'll be a more designated spillway, um, which is shown on the plans by that little, there's a little square on the plans. Um, yep. Like uh, Howard said, there will be a jellyfish filter on this in this section, um, which on the outside will look like a manhole. There will be some exposed above ground just as where water is getting in, um, but it will all be contained within that basin and below like the overall grade level of, um, it won't be sticking up like above the basin uh, per se. Um, then the additional thing that, that will be in the middle of a lot of these basins um, is essentially a gravel strip in, in, in along the base in the middle. So that's where all the water is going to drain to, and it will make sure that the entire basin drains out um, versus we have seen in the past in other projects where if you just have a, essentially a hole in the side of the of the structure the, if the basin's not perfectly level there may be water standing in it and so with the use of this gravel strip at the bottom all water flows into there and then flows off site so when it fills up water will continue to drain through there um, as the whole site is or the whole basin is pitched to that to that location um, but yes, there will be one manhole, um, which would be the above ground, and then with a gravel strip. And that manhole will have a smaller pipe that goes under that overflow. So in the super large storms where um, the pipe may not be enough to transmit some of these larger storms we're seeing in Vermont, there is still that overflow, um, and it will function as it functions now, essentially. Um, this basin is not designed to hold the one in a thousand year storm major extreme flooding event. It's designed to hold the one year storm, which um, roughly equates to a storm that is predicted to happen once per year. Uh, things are changing, obviously, but um, so again, once a year, theoretically, it would fill up and drain out. Um, in the larger storms, it fill up, continue to drain out, and also any overflow would drain how it currently flows. Are you losing any like capacity to hold water? Gaining capacity. Uh, gaining because again currently it's already full so if you can imagine you have a cup that can hold water with a little hole in the bottom if it's already full it's not holding any more water by having that little hole in the bottom as it continues to drain out you get more and more storage so if it's empty when it starts you get all that storage so um the construction looks like uh somebody digs around in the lower part of the of the basin now where the new contour lines are shown and they put um, things in down there and then they rework just the lower section and the upper parts of the slope around the basin remain untouched? Is that Correct. what I'm thinking? Okay. All right. Anybody else have questions? All right. Um, Next, uh, I, we might be able to uh, just go through the proposed work items now and, and we, we might not have to keep going back to the existing, but I thought that was helpful to, yep. to see that. Uh, so let's go to C9. Yep, there it is. So again, you see the, uh, the dash for all the existing contours. Um, all of the darker solid lines are either the new, uh, the, the smaller lines are contours, the larger dark lines are actually some new pipe that will be going in to, to drain mm -hmm. these areas. So again, to, here we're putting, oh God. No, sorry, just to orient us, in the, is the little building on the right hand side, like where, what are the building edges that we can see there? Am I in front of the school, behind the school, where am I? So this is the uh, this is behind the school. These are the, um, the up along the back of the lacrosse fields. 
Yeah, so I okay. think it's the National Resources yeah, yeah, yeah. Building. Yeah, sure. so lacrosse and uh, uh, um, way up there. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. Way up there. This is, and as you yeah. can, uh, you can kind of see it from the existing contours. Um, yeah. There's already like existing some contours down there that it holds some water. Essentially, we're expanding it um, a little bit. It's all still maintaining within that slope that that's currently existing. We're not further encroaching onto the fields or anything. Um, it's, in fact, these contours that you see at the, the bottom of the screen, the lowest contours, we're not even getting, that's not even showing the field yet. Um, so we're still well away from the field, well away from. That's all that marshy area that leads back up towards uh, the new development. Yeah. Home. Yeah, I can't remember, was it Davis? It, so that little building on the right-hand side, is that one of the baseball dugouts or is that no, that's, the, that's the sugar the old sugar shack the old and sugar the, shack okay yeah. yeah and then the on top of that is the garage to uh natural resources the uh yeah forestry building did the old sugar shack stay there or I, I thought you guys put it's still there in... yeah it's okay. still there the old one's still in structure and the new one's up on the top where we had that building all right good okay all um, right and then i can just provide a little bit more detail so this is the essentially the only other practice, the only the different type of practice we're doing on site. So this is a gravel wetland. Um, this will function as there is a four bay for pretreatment. Um, so that is that uh, if in the new contours, um, it, you can see the arrow where it's pointing to as well, the four bay um, where things are draining. So that functions as pretreatment. So that is a two foot depression in that area. Um, there are no exist. They're not like the other areas. There aren't a specific drain. So that one is not technically designed to drain out from soil testing. It probably will just infiltrate through the soil, um, if not a little slower. Um, the point of that is, is to catch any sediment that's coming off the roofs or buildings. Um, so it catches that sediment and prolongs the life of the practice, which is a gravel wetland. Um, so you can see um, there is a dashed line um, with uh, uh, a call out for gravel wetland. It's um, on that left side of those proposed contours, that will look like a mulched area. Um, that will look like a mulched area with some plantings. Um, those plants, there's a gravel basin underneath um, where water sits in at all times. And those plants uh, absorb the nutrients out of the, the water, clean the water, and the water discharges off site. Um, similar to the other practice, as we need to meet that detention requirement in a big storm, the basin will fill up and then drain out. Um, again, it will drain out to the level of those plants. So it will just look like a mulched area uh, after a larger storm. All right, anyone else with questions? While we're looking at this area specifically, uh, might be a good time to uh, talk about trees. This is the one part of the staff report that we're asking the boards to make a determination on whether the applicant is uh, meeting the requirements of section 719E on screening and environmental enhancement. I'm gonna go back to um, the C3, the demolition. Um, we've got 10, I think, total existing trees around this area scheduled to be removed for this section of improvements. Um, so we got in touch with the tree advisory committee for recommendations uh, who recommends place, replacing the trees, obviously. Um, but I think the, the question is um, location. If, if, if replacing them on the exact same spot make, doesn't make sense due to um, conflicts with the infrastructure or um, uh, Howard had mentioned uh, being in contact with the school and that there's a student led group that regularly plants trees around the school if that would sufficiently meet the requirements for the board. So I wanted to open that, open that up for discussion. So I can, as you can imagine, the students frequently come to us about wanting to plant trees. So in the last two years, I think we've planted almost 15 new trees on the school site. That comes with every, every senior class and every environmental field world. Come to my office where can we, can we do the dig safe and figure where they can put it so that's a that's an ongoing constant thing so i would say that if we needed to put 10 trees up we would the school but the students would do that very quickly it would be a, not it would be an academic instructional uh, thing that they would do with their environmental teachers so and and then you just have water green... side, uh you just can't put them back in the exact places where the infrastructure is um you know there, there will be vegetation there 
um, but it can't be rooty vegetation, so trees and stuff like that. Um, and, and that's part of the general permit. Um, so. so it might be that, that you uh, guys need to designate um, areas for future planting on the plans so that uh, even though you're not going to plant them yourselves, the students have some guidance on what kinds of things can go where because uh, I, I know the I mean, there used to be some forestry work up there. There was uh, there was a greenhouse. I know the the school programs are pretty strong, and, and I'm sure the tree planting is going to happen. But uh, they'll need guidance, or you're going to have everything you can imagine just where you don't want it uh, over the years. So um, probably some documentation on what's allowed and what's not allowed, and and some areas where that can happen. Uh, personally, I think that big hillside is, is uh, I really wouldn't know if there were enough trees or not enough trees on it. It seems like it's a kind of a nice uh, hillside all by itself, just sparsely treed. So I'm, I'm not really concerned about what you're trying to screen unless somebody doesn't like the looks of the buildings up there. But, uh, you know, it, it's really not in my opinion, a problem for the landscape or the buffering or the screening in any way. It's just, uh, I think the concept of, you know, if you take out a tree, it's nice to replace it. And uh, if that's a program that the students can participate in, then it's sort of a double win there. So uh, that's my, my feeling. I do have a screening question, I suppose. Uh, I, I went to the site this past weekend. It looks like uh, the, the technology center has a lot of, and I would call it junk, behind their building that is currently screened by those trees. Um, I'm assuming the technology center is part of the high school. And so, you know, they would just store their, their pallets and their sheet metal and whatnot somewhere else, I'm guessing. Yeah, there are some... It's an ongoing educational sort of space up there where they're like those orchards are up there. So they're moving equipment around constantly. It's part of the, that back parking lot where the stuff is laying around is part of forestry. So they do all kinds of staffing projects, you know, forestry projects. So that's just sort of an ongoing student led area. That's always in transition of different types of spaces that are being used. That's where the students learn how to drive like the backhoes and forklifts and all that. So it's kind of an area that does get beat up a lot and it's kind of hidden away, but yeah, there's, it's an area that would be cleaned up. Hopefully that's still, there's a lot going on with the, also with the facilities assessment that we're currently involved in through the state as well. Yeah. Gary, I'd suggest that, um, you know, you also have some security issues with that much uh, hardware up there and, and it's probably nice to be able to look up from the school and see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I would sort of defer to, to Gary and his his site staff to to really um, you know determine what's appropriate and and you know with that guidance and your guidance on the plantings I you know I I'm sure will the plantings in my opinion will not be an issue. All right, where are we off to next? Uh, next page where. So we go down to what we have C10. Tyler, you want to explain where this is on there? Yeah, this is kind of right by that track um, area. Essentially, we are just expanding the depression a little bit where that, that's currently already existing. Um, there's not a specific treatment practice here. It's more of just an area where in the larger storms, water may pull up for a second and then and then go down as it already technically should. Um, I know the infiltration rates there um, are are okay. And so there may be water that just filters straight through. Um, the only thing that's essentially we're cleaning up, neatening up essentially some of the infrastructure. There's that that pipe that is that is marked as uh, it's that dark line. Um, um, that is going to an underground detention system that will be under that parking lot. So part of that parking lot will be replaced. Um, there'll be nothing above ground. Um, you'll see essentially a manhole. Um, and then that flows to uh, that basin. Currently, the pipe that's there is 
craft like in our site visits it's you can't even really see it um and so it's replacing that getting that up to um, standard and then widening the the grass area a little bit uh before it exits out of an existing um or we're replacing an existing manhole and it's going to exit out of there um again this is near rescue is this where this no this is back behind to the track yeah. oh okay. here that one. Okay. yep um so yeah. near the tennis courts, right? I'm yeah, right. so so the yeah. tennis courts are like right to the north of yeah. that, yeah. that 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 square. Yeah. And so that green area <clears throat> is right outside the track. Yep. Um and again, yeah. it's we're just expanding the the what what's there. It, it's still designed to drain out, still designed everything <laughs> the same, just expanding it. So in those larger extreme rainstorms or the, the yearly storm, the one year storm day, it fills up and then drains out. Isn't that uh, some kind of mosh pit or something? I mean, don't the students get in there and, and currently uh, sort of that's where they watch the game from? And I don't know. Yeah, yeah. that is the that, that's the, the the younger kids go wild in there during the football games. Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't there was a recommendation somewhere uh, in the material suggesting that uh we might want to consider fencing or you know i've seen stockade fence well not stock i've seen two rail split log fences around detention basins but uh you know that keeps the people out that that you know are paying attention it doesn't keep the younger high school students out so i it's just a i i really don't know i don't know what the appropriate plan of uh you know uh discouragement is for this area based on its use and the proposed contours and, and activity here. So, uh, you know, Gary, if you have any ideas on what you think is appropriate or if somebody else does, I would just remind people that, that there is a very interesting high density student use on that spot currently, and maybe it just needs to go away and something needs to happen to protect that area. Yes. Isn't there already a fence around that? There's area? some fencing, yeah. but as you know, the yeah. kids jump in. Um, and, and then I just want to point out, so all these slopes, again, are three to one. So that's every one foot you go down, you go three feet over. So it's it's pretty flat. Pretty um, flat? Yeah. So like oh. it's, it's easily walkable and stuff like that. And again, yeah. there's not intended to be water in there, except okay. immediately after a storm. Um, yeah. And it's not actually like sometimes contours can look a bit overbearing like there's a lot of big contours on site but in reality it's grading like a foot and a half maybe deeper than it currently already is but it's much more shallow um so it, it's just going to look kind of like a, a depression the the soil is going to be lower than the surrounding pavement but there's not going to be like a oh you're clearly walking into a big step off right here into yeah. a pond yeah. There's not there's not going to be a, a permanent pond in that area. So it might improve what's there. Yes, yeah, so yeah. that's the hope. Yeah. Well, you won't be able to see the game very well from the bottom of it, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, it's just, you know, Gary may have to keep his eye on it and decide if he has to end up fencing it off. I mean, if it starts to have more water in it than, than you expect uh, based on the weather or something, or it's a particularly wet season, it could be a nuisance or a problem for... You know, you're playing your big rival and there's 500 people trying to stand there. Uh, somebody gets pushed into the water, you know, whatever. So uh, yeah. just I would say that you want to consider something, uh, even if it's a temporary situation for uh, the case where there happens to be water in there. But um, I've seen a lot of activity there in my while my kids were there, let's say. Yeah, and, and just one one final point. Um, with the addition of the underground system above it, um, we're not, no additional water is going there. So it's actually with this additional, with the addition of that underground system, there's gonna be less water flowing there. Um, yeah. And the pattern itself isn't changing. So I don't imagine that you're seeing, it maybe it gets wet at, at, at times, but, um, and so it still may get wet, but it shouldn't, there, there's no more, you shouldn't, we, we're not seeing an increase of water there. Um, so whether or not it actually even fills up during the larger storms, the modeling says it will, but it's that's that's modeling. And so well, yeah, we've had we've had uh, you know, I, I'm I'm sort of a little skeptical on the one year storm design uh, <laughs> standard since we've had 
200 year or 300 year storms in the last 11 years. So uh, it's, it's, we're getting plenty of water. So it, this is going to be something that, uh, I mean, you're right. Most of the time they're dry. So it's just something I think that's going to be more of a ongoing, uh, you know, responsibility for the school to take care of uh, the conditions at any given time. And, and, and based on the use for the, the track area, is, you know, they should be able to handle that. All right, anyone else? Where to next? Uh, next sheet, we're on C11. We'll just keep going down in order there. This is the week. Um, so yeah, so we're now into the stage where every practice we've already spoken about, every type of practice. So similarly, um, in front of the rink, um, currently there's already an existing kind of little pond area. Um, we are again just adding a depression to that green area three to one slopes we very casual or very gentle slopes down there all mobile all grass um with a catch basin there in those larger storms fill up and then drain out um and then additionally in under the parking lot um, which you can see by um there's a, a dashed box uh, in the bottom on the bottom half of that page um, another underground system again picking up water from the parking part of the parking lot that's draining to that to that island um those both drain to those there are two existing like very large manholes in the um, grass area there. in that grass area there's i think there's a little pump house a down pump there house. um the only changes to that will be we'll be adding a jellyfish structure again this one will be at grade so essentially there'll be another manhole cover or, or two manhole covers that you'll see um but it'll be at grade and then that pipe will connect right back to the existing um where the existing pipe goes out. Um, so what that's doing is in one of those those existing structures, we're adding in a wall, a weir wall, so that in those smaller storms, all of the water is flowing out through that jellyfish filter. And then in those larger storms, if that jellyfish filter doesn't have the capacity to handle the amount of water that's running through there, it flows over the weir and then flows out how it currently flows out. So there's no change to the existing amount of water that's leaving the site there except for the fact that there's depression um, so that the depression and the underground system will slow it down um, so all of this is all about detaining that water so it's not immediately flushing the river with pollutants um, and it, it's slowing it down and does some of that water go into indian brook the brook or yes. it, will it change the no okay. no that i mean it will so the, the whole point of this uh yeah. the impaired watershed um yeah. that's what in your brook is yeah. um and it that's what requires us to slow down so okay. trying to slow down that water so that during those storms you're not seeing those flood yeah. levels rise okay. any questions on that sheet or should we go to the next uh area I think we're ready to go to the next. Yep. So C12, um, Tyler, this is where? This is down kind of directly in front of the school at there's a that little island with the, the road that goes about it. Um, this this is an underground system infiltrate or an underground detention system. Um, this is there's no specific water quality treatment here. This is all just detention, slow down that water. Uh, before it leaves the site it's all underground um and there, there won't be in, the pipe that we're installing will exit to where the existing one uh currently does so so the real improvement is the is the rectangle dashed rectangle that that's the structure underground yes. correct and that planting is all there now that's the there's a flagpole on the other end of this little island or something that used to be um i'm just trying to remember the plantings there um but those are all existing plantings uh shown to remain so those are the trees out front. in the middle here. yeah yeah, and, the yeah. Horse, and, and those are all planned to remain yeah. um so all, all the work for this one is tended to be done under that roadway section so there shouldn't be yeah. any above ground change besides the addition of some manholes but of course and there is some parking uh, on the um, inside section. There's parking all the way around that loop, uh, probably both sides of the road, and it gets a lot of use. Uh, it just 
the striping and all the rest of that stuff that comes later is that's not really part of the underground but do you guys restripe or stripe or do it is, will that be part of the drawing set anything uh, that we disturb will be replaced okay yes all right anyone else Okay, on to C13. This is the last area um, where we're um, putting in some stormwater improvements. Um, so again, this is more similar to that first area we looked at. Um, I know there's currently some plantings in the base there. Um, after talks with the school, uh, we decided that, or it was decided that just leaving it grass, easier for maintenance, uh, makes, makes the most sense for them. So. The only change that will be seen, there'll be a little gravel strip in the middle, along with just the rest will be grass, all mowable. Um, so that is that that larger area uh, with that jellyfish filter. So it will function like the other ones that we've talked about, fill up during the larger storms, drain out. Um, in day to day, it, it should just look like a grass island. Um, and then on the other side of that, kind of by the, the, the rescue building, um, essentially just uh, sloping that down a little bit more, widening and widening it out to detain some water to drain back down there um won't be any functional or physical change to above there'll be a manhole there um but it will again just be a a gradual slope down there just designed to detain some water as necessary well that particular area i think was redesigned a while back and and replanted and intended to be a rain garden of sorts and i don't know how well that does what it's supposed to do water treatment wise or water water wise um it used to get a lot of uh, people driving through it and so they were pretty happy to kind of discourage that by putting things down there um is this is going to take all that out and and um, uh, and put in a, a deeper element and and it doesn't have anything really going back in that you look at as a grassy tall grasses any anything that is reminiscent of the um water garden that's there now um so that will kind of be decision for the school um it the the practice itself isn't any deeper essentially the, the lowest contour that's existing, you can kind of see it on there, it says 326. And the lowest proposed contour is also 326. Um, what we're doing is, is pushing that contour out. So it will be a little steeper for a second and then flatten out. Um, in terms of plantings, um, per our Creek's last discussion with the school, we decided, uh, the school decided on just grasses. If in the future, um, whatever the planting, whatever they want to do for planting functions for, for the system itself. Um, if, if it decides to end up not being mowed, that, that that's fine for the system. Um, and and there, there will be that gravel strip down there. Um, but but in, in terms of planting currently, it, it is shown as just grass. Yeah, that was John, that was a environmental club again that put in yeah. that stuff down mm -hmm. there and they just haven't gone back to take care of it. So no one has maintained that for several years now. So it's all overgrown and everything like that. So. Okay, uh, so that brings up two uh, questions uh, for me. One is, uh, I I don't want to increase the just on the school's behalf. It would it would be unfortunate to um, provide an invitation for people to drive through there again. And you know, it just you don't think it's going to happen, but it used to happen a fair amount. Yeah, um, yeah. And so we've talked. We have a plan for some boulders to like you like we have them. around the rest yep. of the parking lot to put over that way to so cars don't go down through there. That was my next question was are you gonna, you know, try and treat it with the boulders again, which oh. which seems to work well and it's you know it's good good thing to do. Uh, okay. Uh oh, the second question. Um maintenance of these uh new structures, um, do they get 20 years from now or something, do you have to go dig them out again? Do they they silt in? Do they do they need any ongoing maintenance over time? Um, so there, so like I said, there are a couple of kinds of structures uh, on the this site. So with these jellyfish systems, they're physical filtering systems. So they are a manhole, goes in dirty, comes out clean uh, in, in, in that regard. So there are filters in there. Um, those filters um, for maintenance, 
are heavily dependent on what's going to them. So if I, I don't know if the school sands or salts their lots, um, but so with salting, there's not going to be additional sediment flowing to there. Um, if it's remaining grass, those grass areas are collecting and through, filtering through that stone. That should greatly prolong the life of those filters. Those filters can be sprayed down um, by like a back truck and kept clean. Um, the manufacturer recommends usually doing that yearly, but it again, it highly recommend depends on the filters um, or the stuff flowing to the filters. Um, and then the filters, they say every five years to replace, but it's as needed due to the amount of sediment going through there. So, so with this design where we have the grassed area and then it's also flowing through that stone diaphragm, um, we expect that it, that it may be longer um, than that. Um, we've also in the initial or in the package included one set of replacement filters as well. Um, those can be replaced by, by maintenance workers. They're not a specific, it, it's, it's a pretty simple system. Um, and then in terms of cleaning them out and along with those underground detention structures, um, general back truck that you would use to clean out catch basins. Um, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Essex. We do it. We currently do the clean out the ones that are there now. So it, it, there shouldn't, there will be more structures to clean out, of course, than are currently on site. But it, there's not anything new that that requires any necessarily additional equipment. Um, and then the other, the the other practice that is on here is that gravel wetland. Um, generally. Uh, Sometimes you may need to replace the mulch if the mulch is, it has gotten filled with sediment and stuff like that. Um, I don't foresee that being too big of an issue up there. We have that pretreatment. We have that. Um, there's, there's a lot of drainage area to go through there. Most of the drainage area there is rooftop anyway. Um, that would just be as needed as if, if you see that it's visibly clogged with, with sediment. And, and that's just standard mulch. I'll note too that we consulted with Chelsea, who oversees the uh, the city's uh, stormwater, um, who asked for a proposed condition for approval uh, to enter to a maintenance agreement with the city. So we've added that under proposed conditions, um, an annual inspection report by September first of each year, um, and uh, drainage computations and modeling. Um, but and in, in providing uh, the city with a copy of relevant state permitting uh, when available. Um, so she'll uh, make sure that we're, we're aligned when it comes to a maintenance agreement for the project. Um, yeah, and, and I know that the state permit has maintenance requirements in it as well um, with that annual inspection. And there's, is it, it's required to be inspected and, and, and noted as maintained or not maintained as well. So um, I would say, It'll probably be talking with the school and maybe Greenprint as well for for some official. Um, and Howard can can weigh in on that. But for if, if there's any official documentation that that is wanted, but um, okay. Anyone else with questions on this one? All right, let's keep going. Jellyfish filtration, like the big part themselves, are they expected to? You you'll never have to remove the manhole. Well, Never, uh, barring some. Yeah, they're expected to outlast the lifetime of of like the permit, essentially. Um, so it's or someone system. waiting after Gary's problem. Yeah, and so again, the, the filters are what what needs to be replaced eventually, but the structure itself is no different than any other manhole. So okay. I'm sure they're like I, I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> that answered it. Perfect. So the remaining pages only cover basically the areas that were disturbing and how the soil is going to be restored and the seeding um, and, you know, reestablishing the growth and then details of all the um, different structures, the underground, our tanks or the jellyfish system. So um, the next pages again are just showing what's, uh, what areas are going to be restored. Kind of the detail sections of these. Yep. No, I can't wait to go uh, see them installing the jellyfish. It should be fun. Uh, all right, anybody with questions on the details or can we get into the staff comments and make sure we're comfortable with all of those? All right, uh, Michael, this might be your uh, section here. Yep. So we've been in correspondence with Howard um, after circulating this to uh, Chelsea and the city engineer and the tree advisory committee. Um, all comments were met to satisfaction. Um, 
but I'll go through them one by one so everyone's aware. Um, applicant should describe requirements for dewatering discharge, such as the use of such as the use of silt bags in their locations. Yeah, so we um, we read the I read all of these. If uh, the rest of the board has already gone through all of these, I had no uh, additional comments or concerns. Does Does anyone else on uh, the board have a, a question on the um, on these items? The items all made sense to me, and I was satisfied with the responses. Excellent. Me as well. I'm satisfied. Yep. Good. Um, the uh, tree committee's uh, comments seem to be mostly related to the, the tree issue um, and uh, just sort of ongoing um, procedural issues on that. So I think I think I've heard plenty on that. I don't have any other uh, concerns. Yep. Um, they they did note the two large lower park, parking lots as a potential location uh, for the for for future landscaping. But um, but yeah, I think staff agrees that this this um, student led group seems like a great direction to go for future landscaping. I do like John's suggestion too for like calling out potential yeah. places to help as well to kind of guide the students in that. Okay. Otter Creek can certainly put together a map or something if the school wants to have some areas that they say in the future. Um, and, and that may not be a part of the, the this permit, or it can be a part of this permit submission as well. We can include an extra page or something if if that's needed, but we can also just give you guys something so you guys can have a, a plan in the future of like, this is where we'll plant trees or possible. Yeah, especially. Yeah, I think that's crucial. And we've, um, you know, I managed a church, uh, you know, board once and and they had people always trying to plant memorial trees and then you had to figure out where they were going to go so we finally got tired of doing one at a time and put together a plan that says okay here are the next 10 tree locations all selected you know let them pick one of those uh, so it, it really helps to give um, guidance uh, i just use that term guidance uh, plant them here don't plant them somewhere else uh, if if that can be part of the material that ends up in Gary's hands, I think that will uh, be fine. I don't know if that's a necessarily a, a plan that goes to the state or has to be, you know, permitted, but but we should see uh, some future planting locations identified on the plans. Anybody else have a comment before we close the public hearing and go on to our um, deliberation? Anything else from the applicant? No, I think we're we're good. Just if you have any other questions. Okay, uh, Michael. Anything else on the uh, city side? Uh, nope. Just as long as, uh, and I can be the point of contact for the the maintenance agreement and the HydroCAD files that Chelsea's requesting, uh, happy to help facilitate that with the applicant. Nice, okay, great. Um, all right, I'm oh, gonna- John, can I ask one quick, just a quick comment, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, the funding of this right now currently is that the state is covering up to 90% of this work. So school district is only covering 10% um, of cost share on this. Why? That's really uh, that's impressive. We, it's uh, it's a good thing to do for our stormwater. Uh, okay. Um, any is there anyone in the audience that I missed or somebody online that showed up and I wasn't aware of? Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing and um, move on to uh, staff's recommendations and proposed conditions. Um. I think um, I will say that the DRB has um, considered uh, this presentation sufficient to alleviate concerns over screening and environmental enhancement. 
and find that uh, we meet the requirements of section 719E. I'll say that I agree with all the staff's proposed conditions and we'll add, uh, what are we up to now? Three, we need uh, HydroCAD files, we need um, a maintenance agreement, and we need the future planting uh, locations. Anybody else have another uh, proposed condition for approval? Did we need the annual inspection report? Or is that, is that part of the maintenance covered? Yeah, these, yeah, all, all the proposed conditions listed in the staff report um, should be in there. So we've got um, drainage computations and modeling, uh, including the HydroCAD file. We've got providing the city with a copy of the state permit when available. Uh, we have um, providing a copy of a maintenance agreement that meets the requirements of Section 713F, uh, and then an annual inspection report, which sounds like would be covered under state permitting. Great. All right. Anybody else? Board members? I'll take a motion to uh, approve this uh, application with the uh, amended proposed conditions. Proposal to approve with the amended conditions. <laughs> I'll second if it needs a second. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for the presentation. Great. Thank you for your time. Makes so Thank much you. more Thank sense than someone who you through it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Parking lot's out this way. Take care. All right. Thank you. Thanks for you. Too. And then you'll pass anything on to Howard um, for the village maintenance on thing. All right. For the, for the conditions, just pass on to Howard and then. Howard will be on contact uh, for as needed. So. Yep, we'll we'll do a full findings of fact and make sure that gets distributed. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Thank Take you. care. Have a good one. Well, I just closed my side window and threw out my agenda. So, <laughs> so uh, from memory, I'll say that uh, they will ask for any other uh, DRB uh, items that we want to talk about tonight. Only one I had listed on there, um, um, working with Otter Creek, there was some mix up. I think we have a, a standing request for um, full size um, site plans to be distributed for everybody. Was everyone comfortable with the size that was provided um, today for the site plans? These are I think 12 by 18s rather than full sizes. I was fine with it. I was fine with it too. Yeah, yeah I, I, we, we hardly ever see the full size ones anymore. People are tired of, you know, trying to figure out how to lay them out and read them. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's online, so you can look at it at your computer if you want. But uh, so I, I suggest you guys just think about your submittal requirements. And the, the one thing that really helps the most is when, um, you know, somebody has colored uh renderings uh, or drawings especially in a you know an architectural application and they get copied in black and white or distributed in you know that that's really frustrating but you know trying to see a color palette then so <laughs> so yeah. that that's my big beef the the size is less important great yeah we had some back and forth with otter creek just making sure they they were worried about if it was scaled to print at a size that it would be distorted and so just wanted to check with everyone made sure that what they distributed was viewable but it sounds like everyone's satisfied with that so moving forward i'll make sure it's uh yeah, matching we, the size. we discovered uh that they um you know it looks like it's 11 by 17, but it's really 12 by 18. So it's a true half size set and, and that's commercially available and many copiers can do it. But probably uh, what I'm thinking is the applicant should be providing those to the city for distribution and not trying to make you guys do it. They uh, are, yeah. Um, 
somewhere in the depths of um, city procedures, it was written to request 11 by 17s, which is why I bring that up. And Otter Creek mentioned that's an abnormal size for them, which is why we got the 12 by 18s. So yeah, just it make is. Sure these were okay. That that brings up the the uh, the real dilemma, which is 11 by 17s fit in a file folder, and 12 by 18s don't. Mm -hmm. So while it may be truly scalable at 12 by 18, it doesn't fit in anything you want to store. So um, that that's kind of a, a wrinkle. And I'll let you guys figure out how you want to do that. You may ask them for one 11 by 17 if that's what Terry needs to file. And, uh, you know, you can choose. I mean, 12, 11 by 17, is a it does cause distortions in um you know most uh you know taking that uh 24 by 36 plan and shrinking it down to 11 by 17 it does do some strange things to the uh you know to the scale great appreciate the feedback only other thing i wanted to ask for um was feedback on my first solo staff report without Chris, if you find any inconsistencies or would prefer things to be written in a different way, um, I encourage candid feedback on that. Feel free to reach me by email or phone if you'd like to chat about it. All right, perfect. Thanks, Michael, very nicely done. Uh, and you're running, running the meeting by yourself too, that's the- uh... In the library, yeah. which was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you, they don't- They took people who are doing They it. took yeah, the model thank, trains thank you, out for you at least. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anybody else comments today? All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. Well, she's passing up all the options. I was letting okay. him do it. He's no, new. Luke. Luke is doing it. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Oh. Aye. 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 All right. The meeting's over. Thank you very much. Yeah.